Let's add yummy food and hot fuels to Minecraft. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, fans, we're back and tell everyone more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a, both a custom food and two custom fuels to Minecraft, of course, here with the Neo Forge. And for everyone that just wants one of those things, you can basically check the description and there's timestamps available as well, as well as, of course, all of the code and everything for download is available too in the description. And there we go. Now, when it comes to the fuels, there's actually two different ways that we can add fuels. That's why we are going to add two. But first of all, we're going to start with the food and let's take a look. To add a custom food item, what we want to do is we want to make well, custom food properties. The properties basically determine the nutrition, saturation, and a couple of other things that you can add for your custom food. That is going to be in our item package. So in there, we'll right click new Java class, and that's going to be the mod food properties class. There you go. And here, what we'll do is, well, we'll create the new food property. So we're going to make a public static final food properties, right? Food properties. And that's going to be the radish here in this case, equal to new food properties data builder. So we're going to choose the builder right here, and then we're going to build this. So the first thing to call, the first method to call is the nutrition. Let's do a three over here Then saturation modifier. Let's do a point to five. And you can see we can always also do always edible. Then it's also going to, well, you're going to be able to eat this even if you're not hungry. And then fast, well, it literally just means that you're going to be, you're going to be able to eat this fast. And using converts to, well, that's just going to then convert this. So, for example, stew converts into a bowl. That is the idea here. And the last thing is the effect, which we'll also add. Even though eating a radish is probably not going to give you an effect, let's just see. You can add a, a supplier over here. So, this is going to be a supplier of a new mob effect instance. So, mob effect instance. Passing in mob effect start and then whatever effect we want. You know, I think health boost actually does kind of make sense. Let's say that for 400 ticks and there is a, let's say a 35% mm, chance to get that. Then call the dot build at the end. And there we have our food properties added right here for the radish with a 35% chance to actually get the health boost as well. If we wanted to see vanilla foods, well, we can sh press shift twice and simply look at the foods class, include non-project items. And right here, we have all of the different, well, everything basically in here, right? Or like all of the different food builders and you can see them for all of the different vanilla foods. Highly recommended to take a look at this. And then basically from there on, you can balance your food as you wish. There is a very important point as well, and that is if you want to make your custom food a drink, right? If that is the case, then for that particular custom food, you will need a custom item class. Just for an example in this case, I'll show this on the chisel item. And here you need to override the get use animation method. Okay. And you want to then return a use anim of drink. There we go. And that is just going to be a custom item class with literally just this method overwritten. And then when you're creating that particular item inside of the mod items class, then you're using that class instead of just the normal item class. That's the idea. And that is how you can get the drink to work. You can also do an anonymous class in here. But that would also work. But let's just see for the normal one, right? So the normal one is a public static final deferred item of type item, of course. This is going to be the radish equal to the items deferred register calling the register method, and it's going to be the radish right here, a supplier of a new item, normal item, and then that is going to get item properties, and this is going to get a food over here, so we're going to call the food method, passing in mod food properties, that radish, and that is the way that the radish is going to get its food properties. And of course, for all of this craziness, well, we need the translation and the JSON file, so let's take a look. Of course, the translation, nothing too crazy when it comes to the JSON file. Well, we can once again just get one of the item model JSON files, drag it into the same folder while holding control, changing the name to radish over here and then changing the name to radish right here as well. So it points to the correct texture and the correct texture. Speaking of that, I'm going to copy this over as well, which is also going to be available to you down below. And that is actually everything we need for a custom food. So just for the sake of argument, let's actually jump into the game. No, oh, no, no, no. We're not quite done just yet. Add it to the creative mode tab as well, you sneaky, sneaky guy. There we go. And now we can taste our radish for the first time. Let's see.
All right, friends, we're back in Minecraft. As you can see, the radish has been added to the game. And first of all, it looks absolutely freaking fantastic. I really like the texture. It looks completely like a radish. And of course, we can also mm, eat that thing. And there you go. We even got the health boost over here. And there we freaking go. That is a custom food added to Minecraft. Pretty freaking awesome, man. Right, with the food done, we'll now do the two different fuels, and for that, well, it's going to be quite interesting. Because, like I said, there's, in Neoforge, there are two different ways to add custom fuels to Minecraft. We're going to, first of all, see the one with a custom class, and then we're going to see the one via the data maps, basically. So the first one is going to be in the item custom package. We're going to right-click new Java class, and there's going to be our fuel item in this case. There we go. This will extend the item class over here. We'll hover over this, create constructor matching super. And inside of here, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to have a private integer called burn time equal to zero. We will also add that as a parameter here inside of the constructor. So this is going to be burn time. And then inside of the constructor, this burn time equals the burn time parameter. We'll then overwrite the get burn time method with all of those parameters from the I item extension. Very important. And then here, we're literally just going to return this dot burn time and that's it this is going to be our fuel item and we could reuse this as often as we would like with whatever types like t burn times we want and of course because this is in like defined inside of this class right we could even go as far as to say and change this up to be you know dependent on whether or not the item has some data uh, associated with it right like some components or the, or or anything like that we could feasibly do in this case, though, that's everything we need. So then we can go back to the mod items over here and actually register this. So public static final deferred item of type item. And this is going to be, uh, I actually have to double check which one this is. This is going to be the frost, frost fire underscore ice, frost fire underscore ice equal to items dot register. And of course here, frost fire ice. I just thought that, you know, Maybe we're going to go a little bit more fantasy with the types of fuels over here. And there's, of course, going to be a new fuel item passing in new item properties. And as a second parameter, the burn time in ticks, that is going to be 800 here in this case. And this way, we already would have a an item that would burn, right? That's the first step over here. But how can we do this a little bit differently? Well, the way that to do that differently is literally just to add a normal item. So we're going to do a public static final deferred item of type item. And this is going to be our starlight underscore ashes equal to items that register and be the starlight underscore ashes. And this is going to be a new item, just a normal item with normal item properties, nothing spectacular about it. And you can see that's kind of strange. How do we now add the fact that this is actually a fuel to the game? Well, we're going to go to our data folder. We're going to make a new directory called NeoForge, all one word. Inside of that folder, we're going to make a new directory called data underscore maps. And then inside of there, a last directory called item. And then a new file. And that's going to be the furnace underscore fuels dot JSON. The contents of this look kind of like this. This is going to well sort of have some values. So we're going to have some values over here. And those are going to be tutorial mod colon starlight underscore ashes and then colon. And that is going to be a burn underscore time of let's do 1200 here in this case. If you're looking for the vanilla values of burn time, press shift twice. And we want to go to the abstract furnace block entity right here. And if you scroll down just a little bit, at some point you should find the build fuels method and you can see the different items and blocks and their respective burn times in ticks. And that is going to be a great resource as well. And yeah, this is the way. So we basically have some data maps. Neoforge has added some of those to be able to, well, more easily add things to certain um, well, in this case, fuels. There's also other things like the composter. You do that via the data maps and things like that. I'm pretty sure those would also be data generable, although I've not tried that out just yet. Th this is still pretty cool and it is pretty freaking easy to basically add things to this in this way as well. So those are the two ways. Then, of course, when it comes to items, we still have to go through all of the normal stuff that items need to go through. That's not going to be anything surprising over here. So, of course, adding them to the creative mode tab, we want to make sure that they have a translation. 
There we go. And then when it comes to the item model JSON files, well, once again, just drag in the same, drag in a item model JSON file that already exists and simply rename this. And then we're going to change this up here as well. There we go. And that's going to be all we need. And then we can copy over the two textures, which of course will also be available to you down below. And if I recall correctly, this should actually be everything that we're going to need in this case. So like I said, two different ways to add the fuel. So, I mean, let's go into the game and see if they burn. All right, as you can see, both the Frostfire Eyes and the Starlight Ashes have been successfully added to the game. And let's just see, you can see those are burn, those burn also in a blast furnace. And of course, both of them are going to work in either of them, basically. So as you can see, all of them work and they should burn the exact time that we've specified. Obviously, we define that in ticks, right? I believe this was 600 ticks and I think this is 1200 ticks. So in theory, the Frostfire Eyes is going to burn half as long as the starlight ashes here and i think you know eyeballing it it kind of looks right I, I don't think that this was 600 actually i think this might have been a different one but regardless of this it doesn't matter they both burn and that is what counts so that is going to be custom fuels yes added to minecraft awesome as always of course all of the code is available down below so no worries there at all but that's gonna be it for this tutorial right here next time in this video we'll talk about custom tool tips hope to see you there so yeah